Okay, so first vlog in a very, very long time. So 2020 was spent back home with family, with the pandemic, had a family member have a medical issue, and then 21 was spent in Kansas building the shop. You'll see a little bit of the shop in this video. Um, things have been in flux for me personally, haven't been vlogging at all, obviously. I'm getting back into it now. Um, right now I'm in Arizona in the bus. Uh, the next couple vlogs will catch everybody up on what's been going on, those that are interested. So we had the Zeppelin Travels, tried that out, that did not work. Uh, we're still, we still have all the minibuses, haven't sold any yet, um, probably sell the diesels. Uh, but the gas units are going to go towards land, we're looking at land right now, doing nightly rentals as well as building more of these buses, but that'll be later on into the future. Um, this vlog will have my travels, um, building tiny home tours, <clears throat> and then we'll have vlogs of the shop in particular um, on this channel as well. So it'll be all things nomadic living, um, you know, me actually out there doing it, and then basically building up the infrastructure for an additional business. In terms of tiny home tours, last couple years have been awesome. We've brought some amazing people onto the tiny home tours team. Uh, things are on autopilot there pretty much. Um, basically just giving people leadership opportunities and roles and seeing how they do. And so far, um, you know, one of my favorite books, The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss, he says, when you give people responsibility, their IQs raise. And I have definitely seen that. And you know, it's like a vice versa. Um, you give certain people responsibility and they flounder. You, you see what's up with them, where certain people, you give them responsibility and they take it on and they own it, which that's what we've been looking for for the team and that's how it's been going. So um, if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments, you know, a little bit more into the business side of things. <clears throat> but um, partner with Wes with the shop in Kansas, um, as I mentioned, that was basically all of 2021 for me. And that's been going really well. We have a really good team there as well, and we're still figuring out some stuff. We'll have a podcast with me, Wes, and Aaron that'll be posted on this channel soon, so you can get a deep dive into that. So this is a vlog that starts off um, at the Gutted event in Alamosa, Colorado. Um, basically, it was the shop versus an RV team and a van team. It was an amazing experience. Um, that will be like the, it's in post-production now, that will be posted sometime in the future, we don't know either. Um, but that's where the vlog starts, and as I say, in the vlog is a little choppy, I'm not used to filming, it's been two years since I vlogged, and it's a little sporadic. So I actually am about to head out of here and go film some tiny homes. Um, woke up at five this morning, it's about 7.40, so I got a couple hours of work in, and going to be getting after it. So enjoy the vlog, let me know in the comments what you think, any particular aspects of what's going on that you're interested in. I do mention that I'm going to be doing eBay. I still plan on doing that, but I don't know how soon that'll be. Just uh, logistics and getting things figured out. So, once again, enjoy the vlog. See you soon. Well, hello everybody. We are back to vlogging. More on that later. Right now, you are in ZEP 2, of course, and we have ZEP 1 right behind me. Brad has been filming in this rig for the last two or three years. He's going to swap out ZEP 1 for a minibus, and we just finished the gutted event. So they're tearing everything down. We have Wes's bus there. Kobuk needs to go back inside. Hey, let's go. Back. Let's go. So as I said, gonna start vlogging on this channel again, traveling around in Zep slash working at the shop. We are at the beautiful Colorado Sand Dunes. Absolutely gorgeous place. The team competed against an RV and a van. Can't talk about that right now, but went well. So we are about to hit the road. We're about to go through an incredibly bumpy road. I'm a little nervous. It's very soft sand here. As you can see, Wes said this is actually worse than Burning Man. So, my bus is going to be coated in that for a while. And 
we were going to meet up with Aaron, who also competed in this event on our team, and then back to Wichita. Right now, Wes has a transmission issue, and if his bus works well, he's going to go back to Kansas. If his bus does not work well, he is going to go down to Arizona to get a new transmission. So things are in massive flux right now, just like always. I'm debating on going to Montana or back to Kansas. I'm not too sure which one I'm going to do. So let's go. All right, we have the beautiful sand dunes. I am very nervous to go down this road. It is very, very bad. Just gonna take it very slow. I double checked everything on the walls. Everything should be good to go, but we won't know until we try it. some cows. Well, we made it, so that's good. Sound like a bunch of stuff fell, so we'll find out what's going on. because we out of that road, cabinets flew open, absolute mess, gotta fix that. And then on the road, heading back to Wichita, Wes's transmission worked perfectly fine. Probably gonna go back to Kansas, wait on my camera, got a new camera, take Kobuck to the vet. Kobe's, hey, hey, come here bud. Take Kobe's to the vet, take a car to the mechanic. Basically gotta get things done before I head to Montana. So, hey Wes, welcome back to the vlogs. <laughs> thanks for catching me on the, uh, <laughs> off the spot or whatever. Thanks for putting me on the spot. I just woke up. Same. What are we doing today? We're, uh, we're leaving, well, we left the gutted event late last night, climbed the pass, and we're getting ready to head back to Wichita, Kansas. Back to the shop. Any words of wisdom? Um, no, not this morning. <laughs> Be well, friends. <laughs> so, made it a little bit further down the road. You can see behind me this bus is an absolute mess. Give you an update on that when I get to Kansas. Laundry, washing, there is dust absolutely everywhere from the event just the wind kicked it in this dust is going to be in here for years i know it's not a bad thing it's a reminder of the gutted event but i'll have a busy day the reason why i'm not back at kansas right now the plan was for me to get back late last night wake up early get on my morning routine take kobe's on a walk work out do laundry do all that i have an engine issue i'll show you that in a second as well but as you can see the bus is just an absolute mess and I wiped these down before we left this is just dust floating around from driving but a bunch of gear everywhere Kobe's is hanging out tools that are letting off dust boxes nature's heads tools it's just a absolute wreck in here dishes 
you might not be able to tell from this video, but the bus is slanted this way. My water inlets down this way, so I have no water. I was planning on doing dishes. It's just an absolute wreck. Had to put everything down because it was so rocky. I have a lot of work to do. Currently waiting on Wes and Aaron to get here. I found a leak last night. So I was driving, smelled like diesel. I ended up pulling over and saw diesel spraying everywhere. So all the tools are in the under bay. I can't get to them right now. Just gonna wait on Aaron and West to get here. They have their tools out and available. I can only find this crescent wrench. I believe it's my return line back in the bus. Is not sealed. Spewing diesel everywhere last night. Aaron and Wes have their tools available in their buses, so instead of taking out all the welders, all the all the saw tables, just gonna wait for them to get here. Hopefully, it just needs to be tightened. That is the uh, that is the wish. Who knows what will actually happen? Uh, Wes and I, actually Aaron as well, we share our location on Google Maps. They're about 45 minutes away, so I'm just trying to clean up as much as possible. Like it looked worse than this before, believe it or not. But this is going through cleaning a bit and it's still an absolute wreck. Like a lot of you know I'm not the tidiest person, but it does get to a certain point where it drives me nuts and I am definitely to that point. Especially not having water. Um, just trying to be productive until they get here. Me a number 10 wrench as well. What you doing Wes? Well, you broke down on the side of the road, so we're here to the rescue. <laughs> we're uh, fixing up your engine, man. You got a, I don't know if it's number two or number five piston back here, but one of your injectors, uh, one of your clamps broke and let it vibrate around and it broke the end of the injector off the, the tube there, right, right at the nut. I wonder if, well, I guess the uh, rocking around on that road might not have been yeah. the catalyst for it, but wonder if that was the final straw because it didn't start acting up till the event. Yeah, it could have been. Uh, I mean, it looks like it's probably been something that over time, this, this thing clamp right here, let me grab it for you. So this clamp right there, you can see where it's nice and pretty blue right there. It broke at some point and that allowed that injector line just to kind of start vibrating around and broke the injector off right at the uh, nut there where it screws into the head. So. We're gonna get another line. It's number 17 on the Cummins manual. So we're gonna get a number 17 line and put her back in place. Uh, gonna take a little road trip, probably. Yeah, Aaron's between work meetings, tracking down parts. This is absolutely part of being on the uh, road. Have me number 10 out of that one. That one's got a bigger, longer wrench on her. Pick it up. Cool. Oh, yeah. Sure? Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, I had hair and hat. All right, so a little bit of an update. We have the injector lines off. Rich, which he got back from, which, from the event to Wichita today. He drove out to us about two hours, 15 minutes. Stopped by a parts dealer, and they had the parts. So we are installing that now. There goes Russ. What we got going on here, Anders? What's wrong with that thing? What, what's that new part for? I don't know. Where's it go? Over on this side. Going there somewhere? Don't, don't set that down. Just hold it. It's new and clean. Right. Got in there somewhere. Look, here's the old dead one. Yeah, wow. the same shape. Get a fly in your eye? A mosquito or something. Alright, let me double check that line. I just did make sure I got it tight. And then we'll put that intake wheel back on. Alright, we're gonna give this a shot. Let's see how it goes. It's gonna go great. 
Needs a good cleaning. Yeah, I'm gonna give her a Ava. Good, good clean. There's Rich. He grabbed the parts for us. Yep. Thanks, Rich. You guys saved the day. Oh no, you guys are the hard workers. Is it All right, we're back in the bus. Everything seems to be running fine. Wes is in front of me. And we're gonna try and make it the two hours to Wichita. Kobuck is not happy because it's windy out and he does not like driving in the bus when it's windy. Kobe's down. Good boy. So hopefully this goes well. My quenched wit had not warned me. The old train kicked in. Never leave an enemy behind you. The bus is still a mess, but I've been making progress. There's the old coves, went by the grocery store, got a bunch of stuff, did laundry today, got the floors all cleaned out, blew out as much dust as possible. Not all of it, I just have a blower, start at the back, went through two times trying to get that thing done. Got the dishes done, trying to get all these stinking flies out from the trip, both on the way here and at the event, flies just everywhere. All the bedding's washed. Just getting ready to do a complete deep clean. I have been running around doing errands all day, just trying to get caught up on everything now that I'm back in Kansas. And I have some stuff to show you in the shop here shortly, which is gonna be a big part of the new vlog. It's one of my hobbies, something that I absolutely love. I think y'all will dig it because it ties into making money on the road. I do have a school bus, it's a little bit bigger, so I'm able to pull it off a little bit better than most, but I'll show you that in a second. But right now, just getting work done, trying to be productive, get as much work done as possible, then finish cleaning, putting clothes away, putting all the groceries away, and going from there. And this first vlog might seem a little sporadic because I haven't vlogged in so long. I forgot how you have to get in the groove to vlog. Once you get into it, it's just natural. You grab the camera everywhere you go. Remember how to film. I'm a little rusty. So apologies if this is bouncing all over the place. All right, so you can see behind me, the bus is starting to get clean. The blanket that goes on the couch is the dry cleaner. Kobe's is enjoying some air conditioning in the bus. I am about to show you the shop because I don't know how many of you have actually seen the shop as well as some of the garage sale items um, and explain a little bit more what this channel is going to be real quick. It's going to be like a hybrid of traveling around the bus, going to garage sales, making money doing a you know mobile eBay studio in here, but that'll be happening more in late October, November when I head south to Arizona. So I'm going to show you what we got going on out here. You ready? So again, I don't know how much you've seen, how much you haven't, but Sepp's painted. We have Wes's bus over there, little mini bus we still need to figure out what to do with. It's a little bit smaller inside than anticipated. We'll see. We have been busy with a new concept. So what we have here is a five window E450 with a roof raise. This one still needs spray foam. This one over here is a bit more done. That's a raised roof bus. Wes is doing, this is a standard uh, five window mini bus. So not too sure what to do with this one. Might sell it, you can't really see because it's dark and no solar's hooked up yet, but shower, 
queen size bed, toilet, all that fun stuff. This is the one that's closer to being done. So, with this one, you still have the shower. This pulls up. Underneath there is the hot water heater, fresh water tank, a chest freezer goes down here. Fits that very well. We have the kitchen area, Trinity toolbox, Ruvati sink, awesome upper cabinet storage. Bathroom still needs to be finished, but Anitra's head is going to fit right in here. Living area down here, and the fancy part. Elevator bed. We will be selling a couple of these, so if you're interested, hit me up in the inbox. But this is the shop that we have been in. All sorts of fun stuff. Basically just a little playground for us at the moment. So my goal is just to get this all set up on autopilot. Um, the original plan was to head back to Indiana. Nashville had some family stuff happen, so I'm gonna be going back on the road doing the eBay thing. But actually, there's Mikey. He works here. Say hi, Mikey. How's it going? Wes is cleaning out his bus. What's up, man? What's up, dude? How's the clean out going? <laughs> what do you think? Looks like you got a lot of stuff. Got a lot of stuff out here. Are you gonna get rid of any of it? Some of it, yeah. I'll uh, just kind of sort through it and figure out what I want to put back in there and what I don't. So this particular magazine, Wes, how much does this go for on eBay? $499. And why is that? You want to show them? Because it's got super awesome, it's very fragile, this has super cool psychedelic art. Or actually they're photos of Mar Marilyn Monroe, nudes, but they're super psychedelic and if we had a black light, we'd be partying all night. So I got this at an estate sale for a dollar. It's worth yeah. 500 I paid a good buck for it. Buck each magazine. No kidding. Very good, man. Got some records and magazines in there. There's another one. Yeah. Just trying to... So, apparently it's pretty rare to find... It's rare to find this intact without these being cut out, of course, because people love to hang them on their walls. And, of course, Chris said this one's extra special because it still has the mailing label for uh, ordering more of these magazines. So that was pretty rare. Also got this awesome poster. Um, need to get it framed because I might put it in the bus, but this is a linograph. And this guy, I found one of them on all the internet. Everywhere I looked, I could not find another one. It's going for 285 British pounds. So might throw that in the bus. And still have this cool one. This is a print. I was able to find one that sold on Etsy but since it sold on Etsy, they didn't have the price for it. So this did sell at one time, but I don't know how much. So I need to do some more research. But every time I look this particular print up, it's only in museums. So got this for 25 bucks. It's a little bit of a risk because I couldn't find it. But a bunch of uh, cool items that I'm going to be storing in the bus, traveling around, going to garage sales, and reselling just for fun. So today, went to a garage sale, found some cool things. So I got super excited for this bowling ball. I would too, because I've been looking for, I want to bowl again. So this is a hammer. Oh, he can talk. <laughs> this is a hammer, which is a USA brand, fairly valuable. And good. then I saw that it was the bite. You can see that. There we go. It was the bite. I couldn't find any of them online. Turns out this is actually the lower model. So I couldn't find it. So I assumed it was a higher, or I hoped it was a higher model. But it's a lower model. I got that at uh, Goodwill. But I think we should start a bowling league. Maybe I'll use that. As I say, it fits my fingers. Yeah. Do you need a model for these? Yep, need a model for these. So right. I typically don't do clothes unless I get a really good deal. It actually fits you pretty well. We'll see. <laughs> Feels a little tight. Oh yeah, it's a little snug. A little snug. A little snug. But apparently that's a 70s leather brand. 
and some of those go for pretty high dollar. I couldn't find that particular one, but the men's clothing tends to do better with that because the women's is dated, but the guys, for whatever reason, it seems like it fits people better, like t for today. It's a little tight on me, of course. Yeah. So somebody just a bit smaller. It might fit Mikey, okay. Uh, he's he's barely. Off, Mikey, try, try that one on. Ooh, look at that one. That one's cool. Here's a vintage corduroy one that I've never seen anything like it before. And it's I couldn't, reversible. It's reversible, either leather or corduroy. Yeah, I couldn't find it anywhere online this, when I was at the garage sale. But it that's has that cool vintage look. That's a cool jacket. What you think, Mikey? It is pretty neat. Pretty cool. Have to do some research on eBay. See if I can find another one. Put a hood on. Did you go get with my fro? Oh. Should I throw my fro out? That's a really cool jacket. Yeah. <laughs> Especially for five bucks. Yeah. And Patriotic Cat, everybody likes those these days. And I found a corduroy hat. So oh, Wes knows about the hats. Uh, den a denim. Yeah, sorry. Den uh, denim a hat. denim hat. Yeah. So these old school denim hats, especially this farm stuff, the most I ever sold one for was 90 bucks. And it was a Purina uh, denim hat. And it sold in two days on eBay. So I always snag these. Denim hats go for a decent amount. And you got a Murka hat. Yep. Willie Nelson. They wanted 20 bucks for it. They didn't get it. Paid five. <laughs> and this was the one that I was excited about. So they brought it out. I was hoping the whole thing would be in here. It is not. The box is worth anywhere from 20 to $30. But it has some different pieces in there. So if you don't know, Lego stuff like this, like this one-off stuff, Sometimes this stuff goes for like 20 bucks a piece. Just for the one little chunk. And the little figures can go, you know, the rare ones, like the Star Wars ones are the really rare ones. They go like, I think the Boba Fat in one particular set, super rare, goes for like $600, $800 just for a Lego piece. So I went ahead and bought it just to see how much these individual pieces. And that's the Han Solo when he got squished in the deal. No, that's, that's oh, no, one of the not. Pharaohs. Okay. I, I wish. <laughs> I yeah. wish. And even these little booklets. They they sell decently. But yeah, I saw that they had some space stuff in there. That's cool. So it's not complete, but I figured I'd go ahead and take a risk. I can probably just slot this all up, put out the figures, put that out there, put that out there. I think it'd sell for anywhere from fifty to sixty. And these horses, especially the old school ones, go for five to ten dollars a piece. So Got a free helicopter. It's actually metal. Little Huey helicopter. Made in Hong Kong. Mesto. But that'll be part of the new channel. Oh shoot, I forgot my cats. My cats might be running. 